In this video, I'm going to show you some of the ways that you can use the shift key on your computer keyboard to make some of the steps in post-processing easier. Uh, I'm going to use Photoshop elements to demonstrate it, but these steps work in most Windows programs and I believe in most Apple programs as well. As a first step, I'm going to demonstrate how the shift key works in a word processing program like Word. Let's say we want to change the type of text in a portion of a paragraph. If we click to identify the beginning of the section, let's click right there to start the process. And then we hold down the shift key while we click at the end of the section that we want to select. You can see that the entire section from the beginning of the click to the end is highlighted. And at that point, we can change the text, color, size, font, whatever we, we choose. We can use this sequence, click, hold down the shift key while we click again in our post-processing programs. Now we're in Photoshop Elements. In this first example, if we want to open up multiple photos at the same time, we can go to File open, and then in the subdirectory where there are multiple photos, if we want to open up, say, all five of these photos, we can use the same sequence that we just used in the Word program by clicking on the first photo and then coming all the way to the end, holding down the Shift key, clicking again, and it will select everything from the first click to the last click. And then if we come down to the lower right-hand corner and we select open, it will open all five of the photos. One, two, three, four, all of the photos. I'll show you four more ways that you can use the sequence in Photoshop Elements. I'm sure there are more than four, but these were the ones I could think of. In this first photo of the standalone tree, I had previously demonstrated how we can extend the border of the photo. We use the crop tool on the far left-hand side. I can click on crop tool, and then we can select the entire photo making sure that the no restriction is selected in the lower left-hand corner. And then we grab the handle on the left-hand side. We can extend the border of the photo beyond the photo itself. If we then commit the current operation, we now have a slightly wider photo than we had before. We have this white section here now, and we can fill in this white section using the spot healing brush. We select the spot healing brush, select a size of the healing brush that is slightly larger than the width of the white strip. And if we hold down the mouse key, we could paint straight down this line. The easier way to do this is by using the shift key. If we select the very top of the white strip, and click, and then come down to the bottom of the white strip, hold down the shift key, and then click again. We get a straight line, and the spot healing brush has filled everything in. Much easier than trying to draw it freehand. Another way to use the shift key is if we want to draw a straight line somewhere on the photo. Let's assume we want to draw a straight line right here at the base of the snow. We can come across to the pencil tool in the left-hand column, select it. We can select the width that we want the pencil drawing line to be. Come across to the left-hand corner, click there, come across to the right-hand corner, hold down the shift key, click again, 
and we have ourselves a very neat, perfectly straight line as a result of using the shift key. For our next example, we'll use Mary Ann Prodel's spooky canal walk steeple photo. In the past, we've talked about over post-processing, over sharpening, uh, or other uh, processes that might cause the photo to show a white halo. And if I zoom in on this photo, you can see that uh, along the edges, there is a white halo. The question is whether or not those can be easily repaired. Using the shift key, you might be able to do it pretty easily. I'll demonstrate that now. We're gonna use the shift key and the clone stamping tool. So we come over to the left-hand side, select the clone stamp tool, come back over to the photo. We're going to select the size of the brush that we're going to use. That's about right. We will select an area that we want to use as the base for copying. And we're happy to be able to copy this area over here. So I will hold down the Alt key to select that. And then we'll come over here and we will click on that beginning spot. Now, if we come all the way down to the end and we hold down the shift key and we click again, you can see that the white halo has been covered over by the clone stamping tool result. We could do it again over on this section. We can select a copying area and this is the location I would like to use. And then I select this spot by clicking once and then coming over here, holding down the shift key and select again. And that line is now gone. I can click again over here and select down here. And again, the white halo is gone. Over the course of about 15 minutes, I was able to use the shift tool and the clone stamping tool to eliminate the white halos. And here is what the result looks like with the white halos gone using only the shift process. For our final example, we are going to use Dale Spillane's reflections on the canal photo. The challenge with this photo is that there are multiple power, telephone, and cable wires running horizontally across the photo. The good news is that those lines tend to be straight lines and we could use the shift key as a way to delete those lines using the spot healing brush. And I will demonstrate that now. Let's zoom in on some of these lines and we will select the spot healing brush and we will select a size that is just larger than the thickness of the cable wires. So if we click to select the start point, come over here and hold down the shift key and click again, the line is gone. If we come over to this white line and we click here and we can come all the way over to the chimney stack on the house, hold down the shift key, click, gone. This dark line here, we come over to the far side on the right, click, come over to the house, hold down the shift key, click, you get the idea. One thing to keep in mind is that these power lines aren't always perfectly straight. Sometimes they sag. So it, it may be better to do them in sections. Let's take a look at the reflection in the water. We can do the same shift process here. Click here, come across to here, 
hold down the shift key, line is gone. Come over here, hold down the shift key all the way across to the far left, hold down the shift key, gone. You get the idea. As a result, without spending too much time on the photo, we can use the shift key to eliminate all of the power lines, all of the telephone lines, all of the cable lines, and go from this photo to something like this. If we zoom in a little bit, we can see all of the cable lines. And if we then select this photo and we zoom in, all of them are gone. Again, it took about 15 minutes to go from the before to the after. That's, and that's some of the ways that you can use the shift key to make post-processing a little bit easier.